This is amazing compost, gardener's gold. And I'm gonna teach you how to make it out of trash. Hey everybody, Lazy Gardener here. And today we're gonna to learn how to make compost from kitchen scraps using just a couple of ingredients you should have lying around. We're gonna use kitchen scraps, leaves, and grass. You can also use weeds and some wood ash if you'd like, but today we're just gonna use those three simple ingredients to make the most amazing compost you've ever used in your garden. We're gonna do it with minimal effort. We're gonna use these machines over here called the Earth Machine. There are many similar composters, but these I get from my county subsidized for $35 a piece, so they're just a great solution. Okay, let's talk about the various components we need to have on hand before we get started. First, we need some wheelbarrows of uh, great chopped grass. Okay, so we have that. You're going to want to have a broad fork or a pitchfork or something that you may need to stir it and move stuff around. Over here, we have buckets of kitchen compost, which I'll show you in a second. And we have shredded leaves. These leaves are just from last season, and these are uh, used leaf mulch that I took out of one of my garden boxes. And we're going to put it through the composter, and obviously we need an earth machine or a similar composter to that. And I just want to talk quickly about the process. This is a hot composting process. We're going to be getting all of these ingredients together and through the magic of nature and chemistry, they're going to heat up to over 140 degrees Fahrenheit and they're going to essentially sanitize everything. They're going to kill all the weeds and funguses and any diseases in there and they're going to make really clean, beautiful compost. Let's talk about the kitchen waste now. Um, what we have here are buckets of kitchen waste. These every night we take uh, out the scraps and we dump them in one of these buckets. These buckets I got from a local diner. I just asked them if they had any, and they gave them to me for free. Um, inside, you can see this one was pretty recently filled. It's got some pretzels, some cucumbers that went bad in the back of the fridge, eggshells, uh, uh, a watermelon rind, anything and everything. We throw it all in there. If it's organic, not meat, but if it's organic, uh, meaning it's made out of uh, from formerly living uh, uh, material, we put it in there and we store it in the buckets. Now, if it sits in here a long time, it will literally pre-digest in the buckets. There is absolutely nothing wrong with that. In fact, it's fine, it's good. I'm not gonna lie to you, it does smell uh, when we take the caps off, but once we build this, the smell will disappear. In fact, when we get the ingredients right, it literally knocks out the smell. Now let's just take a look at the earth machine I have here. This one is ready, empty, and waiting. I put sticks at the bottom. I find that to be extraordinarily useful. What it does is it prevents the materials from really caking against the ground and making it hard to clean up when, it's, when you're emptying it. And on top of that, it helps you let you know you've hit the bottom of the uh, machine when you're doing things like stirring and emptying. If you want to just look real quickly, you can kind of see my setup. I'll, I'll, I won't waste a lot of time on it. This composter is, uh, was made earlier in the season and you can see this stuff is just about done. It's made out of the same materials. If you look at this one here, this one's just a few weeks old and it's moving right along. There's actually two of them combined, but that's just grass and you can see that's in a much less decomposed state, but coming along. If you use this method, you should have minimal amount of effort. You should have finished compost in about 60 to 75 days. Okay, we're ready to build a composter here. Now, what we do is I always start out with some leaves on the bottom. I just find that that's the most effective thing. We want to put a whole layer down. You're going to probably need about three buckets of leaves. Shredded is what I recommend. Um, older leaves are great, highly encouraged. Wet or dry doesn't really matter that much. You don't have to have a hose back here. I do, and as we're trying to finish the stuff faster, it can be very useful, but in terms of building it, you don't need it because if you looked in those buckets, you'll see as it starts to pre-compost, the, there's a lot of water in kitchen waste and that will provide the extra moisture that we need unless your grass is extremely dry, um, which shouldn't be. Okay, so we do a nice layer of leaves like that. Then we're gonna take a layer of grass and what I like to do is I use six buckets of kitchen waste. They're probably about 20 or 25 pounds of waste each, sometimes maybe 30 pounds. And um, the first two layers that I like to do, I only like to just do grass and leaves. So after doing a layer of leaves on the bottom, you want to do about an inch and a half to two inches of, leaves, of grass, excuse me. 
and then another layer of leaves, and then another inch and a half to two inches of grass. I recommend shaking it as you do it in it. The fluffier, the better, okay? You do not want this matted down. You want it nice and fluffy. Oxygen is an extremely important part of the process, and by making it nice and fluffy, you're putting a lot of oxygen in there. So about three large double handfuls should do it, depending on how big your handfuls are. Maybe two can do it. And then we're gonna do another layer of leaves. And as I said, that's the first two layers. After that, we're gonna start putting down kitchen waste. I always put the kitchen waste on top of the leaves. That's just the way I do it. I find that to be most effective. And it doesn't matter in what order or which buckets, whether you put the older buckets on the bottom or on the top, you just wanna get them in there. Now, in getting the buckets in there, you wanna kinda of get them in the center and you want to keep your handle from getting caught. So the last thing you want is a lot of that gross stuff on the bucket handle. Once I pour that in, I take my pitchfork and I just spread it out to a finished layer. Then I'm going to put leaves on top of it. Okay, you want to cover it with leaves. To the extent that it smells right now, the smell is cut by about 75 or 80 percent as soon as I put the leaves on top of it. That smell is very high in nitrogen. That's a, that's a sign there's a lot of nitrogen in there. And that's why we put the kitchen waste in between or on top of the leaves and put leaves on them because we want carbons on top of those nitrogens. Kitchen waste does contain both carbons and nitrogens. It depends on what you put in there. But I can tell you right now, I always sandwich it with the leaves and it helps a lot with the smell. Again, we just wanna get nice even layers. You can see we're already burning through the grass. I'd say if you do this right, it takes about 10 layers, two layers on the top and the bottom before I get to the kitchen waste. So then we put after the leaves, we put the grass, uh, after the grass, we put leaves. And you prepare. If I had ashes, I would then put maybe about three layers of ashes on here. I'd put a decent, but not too thick layer of ashes right on top of the leaves. And I, like I said, I'd only do that about two or three times during a composter. All right, we're going to take another bucket of kitchen waste. And I do recommend here, see that? You can recognize most of that stuff right now, but in just a few short weeks, you will not recognize any of that. I do recommend you put the caps right back on your buckets right after you empty them. And that will also help tremendously with the smell. Okay, we're going to spread that out. And again, a layer of grass. This does not take long to put one of these together. And tomorrow we'll come back and we'll see if it heated up properly. You could even add some weeds in here. Weeds are nitrogens. You'd add them in the layer uh, either instead of or with the grass. But I do find that there are better ways of composting weeds. And I'm sure I could do another video on that at some point. All right, remember, leaves, grass, leaves, waste, leaves, grass, leaves, waste. And again, the last two layers will be just like the first two layers, no kitchen waste. Okay, we're moving right along. I've got another two buckets of leaves. Um, we're gonna put our fourth bucket in. How much leaves do you put in? You just really want to cover up any of that garbage you put in there. If it's able to spread out when you're in there, you don't need more. I'm not doing anything with the kitchen compost to prepare it. I'm not cutting it down into smaller pieces. Um, you really would be surprised at about how easily everything is going to just break down in here. It's nice and contained. I have very large composters that I can make a lot of uh, compost with, but they're not suitable for kitchen compost. I find that these are perfect for making kitchen compost. I have calculated over the years that I have taken a minimum of 20,000 pounds of garbage 
out of the waste stream by doing this. And on top of that, it makes the most beautiful compost. And my tomatoes are huge, and my cucumbers are vibrant, and all my plants are lush because of this. So how can you go wrong here? Don't forget at the top to kind of shove it down into those corners. There's Little edges can hold a lot. Like I said, if your leaves are wet, that's fine. If your leaves are dry, that's fine. If they're relatively new, I would and they're dry. I would and they're not they're not flaky like this. I would see. Look how nice these these leaves look. If they're not like that and they're dry, you can run them over with a lawnmower. If they're wet, that might be a problem unless they're crumbly. That's it. Right, the last thing before I forget, it's just these. Talk about needing water. You will need a hose to wash these out. You want to rinse these out. If it, you can pour them into here. Um, I don't recommend that if uh, or your your compost that you're pouring in was had a lot of water. You don't want to overly sog this down. I would say this has more than enough moisture in it to get going for a couple of weeks. So I would dump these. In my opinion, I would dump these in uh, the one that I have holding weeds which, like I said in another video, I'll show you how to get rid of those. That's all I have to do for today. Tomorrow we'll come back and we'll stick a compost thermometer in there, make sure it's heating up properly. Then in uh, about two weeks, we'll stir it. Maybe we'll stir it again in two weeks after that. And you'll see already by then, it'll be looking a lot more like that. And a few weeks after that, it'll be looking like this. And then after that, it looks like that beautiful crumbly stuff I showed you in the beginning of the video. See you tomorrow. Okay, we're back. Uh, we didn't get back the next day as I promised. Uh, I apologize for that, but it's about two and a half days since we built this composter. That's not a problem. It gives a chance to really get up to heat. And what we're going to do now is take its temperature. Um, one quick note is that if you have one of these devices and it has a vent on it, you want to leave that on high. You want to get maximum airflow through uh, the vent. Now, if we take a look inside, we can see that it's gone down about 40% already. I haven't done anything to this pile. That's just part of the natural process. That tells me that things are moving along really well. Let's stick this compost thermometer in there. These things are fantastic. I'm gonna put that right there in the center. And you can see that kind of rocketing up. And I'm just going to talk to you real quick while that gets up to temperature. I just want to make a note that on YouTube there are many videos about composting. Most of them are not hot composting. Hot composting is a very specific method um, and the purpose of it is to compost quicker and to essentially sanitize all the materials that you're composting. In this manner, using hot composting, it's going to kill all the weed seeds, it's going to kill the fungus and the and the nasty pathogens that can affect your plants that, you, that may have been on diseased plants that you put in here. And all that will come out in almost a clean, sanitary uh, compost, really good for your plants. Don't get me wrong, you, anytime you throw organic materials into a pile and you let them sit there, they will decompose. Uh, this is a much quicker method. And uh, I think a far superior method as well, especially for dealing with kitchen waste. Because I want you to know, this doesn't smell at all. The smell is completely gone. We could put our nose in there and take a big whiff and we would not smell anything and that tells me that I got the formula right. If you do smell almost like a sweet uh, ammonia type smell, that means you used, or, or if it smells really bad, uh, it means you did not use enough uh, leaves and you can just put some more carbons in there and that should resolve that issue for you. Okay, let's take a look at the thermometer and see what it's gotten up to. It's about 145 degrees. If we wait, it might even get a little hotter. We can see here, it's like it's a whiteness. That's the bacteria that's actively hot composting. If I put my finger in there, I don't see if we can get a little steam to come out of here, maybe not, but it's extremely hot to the touch. Not nasty at all. Just good old decomposing plant material. In fact, look, that looks like it's getting close to about 
150 degrees Celsius. You don't want this to go over 160. If it did, I would stir it, but that shouldn't happen. Um, and there you go. That's my video on hot composting in one of these uh, devices. Obviously, you don't need to use an earth machine. You can use any, any one of these composters. Don't let anyone on the internet tell you that you need at least a three foot by three foot by three foot pile to do hot composting. Not only is it not true, I just disproved it for you. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, give it a like and a subscribe. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. And good luck, good gardening.